Calor que provoca arrepio. Dragão tatuado. Hi Judy, hey Shakira, Alexis from Dallas and Jane, welcome to Rio de Janeiro. Hi Iris, or Iris, Joey, hey hello Alexis, thanks for saying hello. Today is 24 centigrade here in Rio de Janeiro. 72 Fahrenheit, cloudy day, but it's still beautiful one. We're here with the song The Boy From Rio, Menino Do Rio, sang, written and interpreted by famous singer and composer, poet Caetano Veloso. Hi Debs, thanks for joining. Calor que provoca arrepio. Toma essa canção como um beijo. We are here now from the rocks of Arpoador Beach. And T is entering. Alexis is 106 there. Summertime while here in Rio de Janeiro is winter time. 24 centigrade, 77 Fahrenheit for us. Winter time is not bad. Eh? We are not wearing coats, as you see, many of us are on tees, skirts, bikinis, and many surfers on the boards. We are in the Aquador rocks with the soundtracks inspired by the beaches of Ipanema, a place where different artists, hippies, communities, rock and roll, surf competitions, and trendy people started to occupy and create the beat culture, which Rio is known for internationally. Today in our tour, we will talk about rock, surf, beaches, travel tips to Rio de Janeiro, while we walk through the beaches of Arpoador and Ipanema. Some of you will know water is warm. Not at all, Joe. Joe M. Many people will think that the waters of Rio are warm, but actually not. They are not. And I tell you what, we are based by the Atlantic Ocean, but in Rio de Janeiro, there are the currents coming from the South Pole, which will make the waters cold. But with temperatures of 42 centigrade or 35 in summertime, people don't care because the waters are cold. We are tan on the, the beaches, on the sands, and then we get completely uh, refreshed by the cold waters. And I think we are two hours between us. Ah, okay. Janet, V, and Clara, thanks for joining. Let's go on this walk. We can see many of the occupations of Arpoador and all the surfers going on there. I'd like to show you a little bit of the history of this part of town here. From the sunset, people are gathering. Our sunset today is going to happen in 20 minutes. And despite of the cloudy weather, many people came for to see if some of the lights of the sun will clash with the clouds in the sky and open up some space, bringing hopes of sunnier days here in Rio. But of course, it's not cloudy every day here in the winter time. Thanks Eva or Eva for joining and Catherine. I'm gonna share with you from a view of the old Aquado beach this old picture of the 60s here in Ipanema and 70s when they built up a pier to, for the constructions of the emissario, which was the tubulations to send the waters and the, the sewage all the way far, far in distance in the Atlantic Ocean here. In that time, the, this 
bridge, this pier created a new configuration for the waves and changed the landscapes and also the grounds under these waves and was turning the waves here around very high. So therefore, during the 60s and 70s, with the trendy neighborhood that was shaping here, many championships of surf attracted people and champions from all over the world and from Rio, different parts of Rio, to this newborn neighborhood that was becoming trending and inhabited by artists coming from all over the world and all over Brazil to Ipanema. People were coming here to, uh, in the hippie times to make their art to some of them become famous and have a drink such as these guys selling kaipi fruits in the town in the beach so you can have a sunset with drinks around so while this was being shaped many musicians was coming here to look after fame here more people are coming even for portugal hi nuno and catherine thanks for joining melanie Mary Lou, my dear Mary Lou, always present in our tours here in Rio. Thank you so much. So as you see, it became a tradition in this area to come for the sunset in Aquado Rocks. So people coming to this part, hippie generation, to have marijuana during the time to smoke, when smoking marijuana was even more dangerous because these were the military times and on the other side of these rocks there is the military base of the Copacabana fort. Hi Dana, thanks for joining. Hey Debbie, Dana is also a tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro, They're running different tours in town and spreading the word about Rio and culture in Rio de Janeiro. Look how crowded this picture from the 70s so Ipanema became a trendy place for new fashions and then people would come and gather here for the new dunes, sand dunes of Gal Costa, famous singer of our Brazilian popular music. New trends of bikini wear, bathing wear, bathing suit was being launched in the 60s and 70s in Rio while people and girls was testing their topless, taking off the upper part of the bikinis at the beach. So they were launching new fashions in this growing and ever growing neighborhood in a time where the first uh, tall buildings started to shape new waves to the urban plans of the area. Back there, we see uh, partially clouded the views of the Copacabana, of the Iparema and the Two Brothers Mountains and the Vidigal Favela community down here and Leblon on the other part of the beach, separated by the canal of bringing the waters of the Lagoon Rodrigo de Freitas. Hi, Nuno. Nice. Now I would like to invite you to this walk with me. And with Daniel. Hi, Mark P. Thanks for joining. My name is Kelly Tavares, tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. And today we are here in Arcoado Rock, Towered Arcoado and Ipanema Beach. Please remember to follow me at Rio Encantos on all social media and on Instagram for live tours, walking tours, private tours in Rio de Janeiro and also live streamed performances to share with you a little bit of our culture here in Rio de Janeiro. Me and Dana are doing this job here for you. So please navigate around your frame, check the buttons that you see. You have different buttons to support us. You have a button for checking the map on which part of the south zone part of the city we are in Rio. And also if you Appreciate this tour and also if you want to support and help us keep doing this job, Diana and I, is very appreciated and important that you tip ourselves. I'm here with my friend Daniel today, 
supporting me with his video production of Pena Porta videos. You are welcome to follow this guy. And if you like the beautiful landscapes of Rio, know that Daniel is a photographer, a professional photographer. He has his own web shop selling beautiful pictures of the landscapes of Rio de Janeiro and many places where he went to in South America. So if you want to have that souvenir, nice portrait of Rio in your walls and support and local artists, talk with me on Instagram and I'll let you know and share his link with you. Also remember to pay as we go and we will be even glad to have uh, our caipirinhas and to pay our investments on equipments, travel costs, while when you come to run these tours for you. So here, where we are, on the top of the Arpoador rocks, is a nice place where we people are now gathering more and more because it's almost 15 minutes for the sun to set. But since it's clouded today, we won't have a sunset, but we will have this nice walk. Many people are coming to hike on the rocks of Arpoador, where we can see we are surrounded by this beautiful tropical vegetation and the biomass surrounding the beach areas. Pode we can see vegetations from the Hestinga biomass. And Hestinga is the name of the ecosystem, the vegetation that you find in beach areas, sandy areas, desertic areas in Brazil, especially around the beaches, which are palm trees, cactuses, succulentas. They're bushes, they're short, not tall, usually. And I'm afraid of oh, sliding on these rocks. So it's fine. Some of these cactuses, which are plants very resistant to live on the rocks since they don't need a lot of water to survive and they grow really slowly. So they make beautiful landscaping to make the hikes around the Arpoador rocks. We, can, we are coming out of the one of the trails all the way to the beach where we are running the tour today. Hey, Debra, thanks for joining. Madison from Virgin Islands. We are coming down here. I hope I don't slide on these rocks. Otherwise, cameras will roll down. And let me test the grips of my sneakers. Woo. Come. Let's go carefully and happily. This uh, Arpoador beach was my favorite beach when I was a teenager coming here with my cousin. And we used to come here and adventure and diving into the waters uh, of this beach with this cold, chilly waters and sometimes even almost drown when pulled by the currents. But we were very brave. We survived and helped each other, and we had so much fun together on this amazing beach. Arpoador Beach with Ipanema, these are like favorite place for people to come and bathe and sunbathe here within Copacabana. And it divides this part where we're walking at, at the Posto 7. And Posto, we call these uh, white constructions. Hi, Poppy and Frank from Southern Alberta, Canada. Welcome. These white constructions, they are called the Posto, P-O-S-T-O. -O, and they will have like bays with lifeguards, with toilets and services that people can use. Where we are walking on, uh, on the right side, there is another beach, which is a small beach of 500 meters length. And it's called the Devil's Beach. When the waves 
on this side is not good, proper for the surfers, they move to the other side, seeking for the best waves possible. And in front of us here on our right is the park of the girl from Ipanema. How many of you have heard, have listened to the song of the girl from Ipanema? Hi, Poppy. You, you, hey, Alexis. I think I have. You think, Susan? Thanks for joining. 360 World Marie. You've heard the girl from Ipanema song. Garota de Ipanema. Is nice, great reason for joining the tour. The beauty that is not only mine, the girl who passes by alone. Oh, if she knew when she passes by, the whole world fulfills itself with grace and it's more beautiful because of love. So the song, The Girl from Ipanema, uh, João Gilberto was uh, a very important composer of the Bossa Nova songs and a very important guitar player within Baden Powell as well. And the lyrics, they were composed by the two men who fell in love with the girl of Ipanema. It was composed in 1962 by Vinicius de Marais, Moraes and Tom Jobim. And they were here. And uh, uh, here we are in Aquador, and up front is the Ipanema Beach. They were sitting down every day by the Veloso Bar, seeing the, and enjoying the landscapes of Ipanema and the Ipanema Beach. While in the Praia de Ipanema, they were seeing a girl who was a brunette girl, dark haired, who was coming every day to the beach. So they started to observe that girl and they fell in love with her beauty. But now guess what? The girl from Ipanema, which is located in the South Zone neighborhood, wasn't actually from Ipanema. She was from the suburbs of town, the North Zone part of the city, from Grajaú neighborhood. From a wealthy uh, family, she moved all the way to Ipanema, setting residence here and going every day to the beach to practice sports, wearing her beautiful bikini and making these poets to fall in love with her. But that was a far away love for them in that case. They both fell in love with Elo Pinheiro and, and she was really young by that time. She was 16 years old and well, they were 16 and more than 30 years older than this girl. Vinícius de Moraes and uh, Tom Jobim, they confessed their love for uh, Eloísa Pinheiro, Elo Pinheiro, and they asked if she wanted to date him. Here is Vinícius de Moraes and Eloísa Pinheiro. The girl from Ipanema. When she was very young, as you can see. Ah, oh, Nuno, thank you so much for letting me know. Hi, Christian. Thanks for joining. Hi, Christine. Uh, is uh, Are you all facing uh, internet, internet connection defaults, delays, or pixelation there? Ah, okay, it's okay for you, Joe. So, Nuno, thanks for letting me know. This is very important so we can deliver the best uh, tour. All right, thank you so much. Here for me, for us, the signal is showing that it's perfect, excellent with five points. So Nuno, our recommendation when the sound and the image doesn't go well is just reload the tour, go out, come back, and we'll be here 
uh, with you, okay? All right, let's keep our walking here. We can see passers by now riding their bikes of Itaú. It's another thing that you can do. It's fun when you come here to, to Rio. You can, there are many bike racks around the city and the south zone and city center. You download an app of the Itaú Bank and put your credit card number there, purchase a few hours, and then you can rent your bike and ride it around beaches and parks. You're welcome, Nunu. So then the brunette girl of Ipanema, Eloisa Pinheiro, here in another picture, very elegant girl. After denying the invite of Vinicius de Moraes and Tom Jobim, she got married with a wealthy uh, military man who was and raised up a family with him. After they had a few financial problems, this, fi this traditional family of a lady, you mean like, you know, from the 60s and 70s of a conservative family from the North Zone part of the city, she received many invites to be a TV presenter and to pose as a model to different articles and magazines, including the Playboy. Elo Pinheiro, she became an out spoken woman and she now presents different TV programs. She has a TV program of her own and she is now with 77 years old. Would you like to see a picture of Eloisa Pinheiro, Elo Pinheiro, a garota de Ipanema today with 77 years old? Thanks Hans and Bava from Bavaria. Thanks Judy. So here is Elo Pinheiro today. She dyed her hair blonde a few years ago and now is a Lopiero of 77. Wow, yes, Christine. Many people say uh, that she kept her beauty at the most. Indeed, a Lopiero. And yeah, definitely an inspiration for many people. And it's an interesting thing that people say about uh, the beach culture here in Rio is like how people uh, get amazed by seeing how people practice numerous sports, riding their bikes, volleyball, and here in Ipanema, the practice of uh, beach tennis is a big thing, really important, and uh, soccer, beach soccer as well, and how people will find different things to do, uh, fitness, to work out, really caring about the shape of their bodies and the health through uh, healthy foods that we are very fond of eating fresh vegetables, fruits, a lot of water. And indeed, that's a practice that you find in especially in the areas of the South Zone and in the city center where people expose more their bodies during the summer and throughout the year. Thank you, Donna, so much for your support. Thank you. When you come to the beach of Arcoador in Ipanema, Copacabana, there are many services, different kiosks, and people selling milho verde or uh, corn, fresh corn, acai berry and smoothies. Coconut water drinks. And in different kiosks, especially in Copacabana, you find different artists playing songs throughout. Hey, Claire, thank you so much. In Arpoador, where we were at the Rock of Arpoador, the rock is named after the Arpoon, Arpooning. It was a practice very common in the base of these waters these cold waters where the whales in the 1800s would come and proliferate to have their cubs, their babies. 
So it was a common practice during the 1800s for the ar harpooners to hunt whales and use all their parts to create and use in different things, such as in constructions or have their meat or remove their oil. And but that practice becoming very uh, invasive, not respectful, not following the respect of the laws of the ecosystem, they led into reducing the population of the whales. And also the whales being very smart, big mammals, they figured out that this wasn't a safe place for them to come deliver their babies. So they migrated to deliver their babies in the waters of Espirito Santo state and especially Bahia. Itacaré is a place where I was running towards and where the whale watching season starts from September until November. Thanks, Claire and Stacy, for joining. Hi, Jean Christine. Come with us on this walk. We are now moving from Arcuado to Ipanema Beach where through the sidewalks we can see this distinguishing change on the design of the sidewalks, which in my Copacabana tour, I talk about the origins of this design, which has a relation with Largo do Rocio in Lisbon, Portugal, and which was brought here to Brazil in the beginning of the 20th century and later became a practice and a modern practice being incorporated in the urban plans from the 60s and 70s and so on as they were developing in the different parts of town. I would like to share with you a song from another famous composer, Cazuza. All right, Mary. Uh, soon I will do that again. Nice. Thanks. So another person, people who joined after, will have a chance to, uh, to see again the girl from Ipanema. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for joining. So like I told you, uh, Ipanema was a trendy labor neighborhood that was being developed and occupied in the, 40, in the 40s, 50s, but especially was growing as a trendy hippie neighborhood of artists in the 60s, when at the same time, uh, in the end of 60s and beginning of 70s, when uh, this artist community was moving all the way here, because of the constructions that was taking place, also the changes there on the sand and the dunes and the buildings. The thing is that this was mainly occupied by sm sh uh, smaller buildings and later, little by little, they were being uh, built big store buildings, which was also uh, suffered critique from Vinicius de Moraes, who was remembering the old times of I an Ipanema with short buildings and smaller houses where artists, poets would come because the rents were cheap. Huh? Beach, it was a beach life being developed. Many hippie people coming, moving here because of the rents. But as it was becoming trendy, like in many other 
artistic and trendy neighborhoods throughout the world, it started to attract the people for the new fashions of doing wearing bikinis, topless, famous musicians, singers, composers, and the bossa nova composers living and moving here. It made uh, the eyes of people from all over the world to look at Ipanema and start a real property exploitation here, building tall buildings. Uh, then in the 80s, many of these crowds of rock and roll players and composers, they were playing in the lonas of the Circo Vilador, the Flying Circles, which is a performance hall that was set there in Leblon, at the end of the Ipanema Beach. And many of them were becoming famous and uh, in, in the end of the Arcoador Beach. And they, it was a big hit, a big, big success. And many artists organized themselves to put up shows and performances and festivals around in Arcoador. One of them was Cazuza, the rock singer and composer that I showed you here. He composed this song, Faz Parte do Meu Show, uh, it's part of my performance, it's part of my show, this song that I just played for you here, uh, in the 80s, in the end of the 80s. And he mentions the beautiful rocks and songs of uh, Arcoado, where we started the tour. So you find many of the kiosks, some of them hosting in the evenings live music, seafood, caipirinha drinks, with beautiful, diverse people by the seashore. Now I'd like to show you the girl from Ipanema with a song recorded by Stan Getz. It's the English version of this song. So uh, composed by Tom Jobim and Vinicius de Moraes from the Bossa Nova movement in 1962, this song became famous when Frank Sinatra recorded it and Stan Getz also did the playing uh, this music, this song in its uh, American version. And with that said, I'm going to share, because Eloisa requested, the pictures of Elo Pinheiro as a young girl of Ipanema, or the Garota de Ipanema. Let's see a beautiful background where I can share yesterday's picture of Elo Pinheiro. A Garota de Ipanema, Elo Pinheiro, with the mountain of the Two Brothers Mountain on the back. I'm going to choose another one. There are so many beautiful uh, pictures of Elo Pinheiro on her 16, 17 years old in Ipanema. Thank you so much, Joe. And uh, Elo Pinheiro, she uh, first was a brunette and she was also, let's say, uh, accepting the trends of the new bikini bathing wears that was incorporated here in the bathing suits, men's wear that you find until these days in Rio de Janeiro. That's the girl from Ipanema, Sarah. I'm glad um, we are showing that again. So you arrived later. And you were able to see Elo Pinheiro, Eloisa Pinheiro. Yeah, so there you go, Olá, tudo bom? Olá! Olá. Ah, qual seu nome? Alan. So here is Alan. If you want to get a very good caipirinha, caipi fruit yeah, here oh in Ipanema, you should look for Alan. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love you real. Yeah. I love you real. Look. Oh, uh, I love you real, Alan. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Brazilian drink radio, Alan. I <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Bye bye. bye, -bye. You're welcome. Uh, Alan, he is a fruit juice. It's a kipe fruit with syrup, a fruit syrup. There are the kipe fruits made out with the fresh fruits, which are better. And uh, and and caipirinha is a, a national drink made out of lime, fresh lime, cachaça, a Brazilian national spirit. So we squeeze the lime with a little bit of of sugar. Or honey but mainly sugar you put a little bit of ice you uh, stir cachaça one dose of cachaça on the top of the ice and you stir that and you make the caipirinha drink but you can make the caipi fruit with fresh fruits of your choice or blended or with the syrup which is another version that they sell here at the beach It's an alcoholic. Now, uh, Elo Pinheiro, she wasn't a model at first. How much it costs? Uh, it costs around 12, 14 reais, which is around three dollars. Three dollars, three euros at the beach. Thanks for your questions, Judy. Why was the girl famous? Who was she? Ah, Sarah. At the beginning of the tour, we showed this picture and I'm going to share again. So this is Vinicius de Moraes and Elo Pinheiro. She moved from Grajaú, from the suburbs of Rio, to live in Ipanema. And going to the beach every day, the poet Vinicius de Moraes from the Bossa Nova, the composer of The Girl from Ipanema, fell in love with her. So she, he asked her if she would like to date him and marry him, but her heart was already promised to another guy from a conservative family, a military, and who she fell in love and married with. She wasn't a model. In the 60s and 70s, being a model in Brazil and in Rio de Janeiro was not very well seen. So, but what happens is that an economic crisis in the family and many tempt tentative, temptative, I don't know how to say that, promising. Ah, the song was written in 1962. Please make the math and give me the answer. You good at math? Please. Composed in 1962. So the girl receiving many... Uh, Não, quantos anos o, o Vinícius de Moraes tinha? Uh, she was 16, 17, and he was 30 years older than her. More than 30 years older than her. He was, uh, as you see there, in the, his old uh, 50s. But uh, also his friend Tom Jobim, who was a little bit younger, also was disputing this love for the girl. Yes, Sarah, indeed, Vinicius de Moraes, for this love barriers, he didn't see any age problems. Actually, this is a thing that people see here in Brazil. Uh, many people do not have prejudice, and either men and women date younger or older people. As you connect and you love, and you go beyond that, and you... Just go for it. Love is what matters. And for some people, love and money will be a good combination as well. <laughs> so that was the case of the girl from Ipanema. Being very young and finding what she would consider a good candidate on that time from a conservative family who also influenced uh, the girl to date um, a guy from the military. But economic times crossed their paths and promising 
promising offers came came to uh, to her in order that she ended up accepting as the years passed by offers to be a model posing for photographs in famous magazines throughout the world as the song became worldly known globally known after the recording of this English version by Stan Getz. Let me see the comments here. Any smart woman should be emotionally and financially independent. I totally agree, uh, Miss, let me see, Miss Manhattan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me check the comments uh, here. Uh, let me see. Okay. Thank you so much for your comments. I totally agree that we need to be independent, smart, and look after our uh, our economics. I totally agree. I'm a woman like that because freedom uh, of our independency, of going to wherever we want, is what we need as women to seek for. But not everybody will teach their daughters this. So it's good that you point that out. Yes, some people will use marriage to escape poverty or love doesn't know age. I agree with that. When the love is true, doesn't know age. Yeah. Now, well, of course, pedophilia, no, it's different. But if you are a teenager, if I was 16, if I was 16 and I, I dated people with 27 when I, I it wasn't a problem for me okay and the age is already far so my mom when she was 14 she dated man of 45 and she wasn't you know she wasn't running away from poverty she was having fun <laughs> you know so this is also things of sin matter of sin uh life perspectives and it's uh, uh, an interesting conversation to have yesterday I was talking with my mom and my aunt and they were both saying oh they were remembering the old times and my mom now is 63 years old my aunt is five years younger than my mom and they were like looking pictures of the man some of them who became famous today they're famous musicians who now they are like almost 90 years old, 80 something, and they were remembering and laughing together, both of them like, God, 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 do you remember? We had so much fun dating this guy and that guy who was like almost 30 years older than us. But we had so much fun. They took us everywhere. We went to different places and parties and could offer so much to us as young ladies say, so they don't say and look at that in a badly manner. I think it needs to be like in a dialogue and built up in a way that there is no pressure from both sides and true, true connection, you know, it's possible. So there are different ways to deal and see that. Let me see your comments. I don't want to miss anything. This is getting polemic. Love or lust? That is the question. Hey, RJ. What's up? Uh, what's up, RJ? You entered in the polemic time. I really like that as well sometimes. Sometimes. Let's not exaggerate, huh? Have two question motives of men being with very young girls. Uh, is that Sugarloaf in the background? Ah, here on the background, Susan is the Two Brothers Mountain, which you see there on the background with the clouds on the top. It's a beautiful mountain with a 40 minutes hike all the way to the top and 
gorgeous views. I've done all these hikes myself. I also lead tours with hikes here in the city. Quase todas as fotos de Ipanema vão aparecer. Let me see. Uh, Miss Manhattan said, listen, these so-called May-December relationships, is that what they are called? Sugar daddy relationships go on every minute of the day. Yeah, in history, there are many examples of relationships of people with ages that are far different. And many of them uh, encompasses true love. Not all of them, but not all of them in many cases as well. Sometimes people will have same ages, but because of different reasons, poverty, family pressures, uh, class issues, people will marry without even loving each other. So this concept of romantic relationship, marriage, has so many variations and diversifies throughout the world that it's complicated to put everything in a box. Like I said, my mom and my aunt, they were really young and they, they were what we call the namoradeiras. They loved to date and they liked to date older guys because they thought it was more fun to to go and conquer the city and see everything and go to all places. They could offer that to them. They never felt abused by them, but on the contrary, they were very respectful. Never. They, they didn't feel, they don't, have, when they talk about them. these guys, like Maurice Weinhorn, for example, is a famous uh, uh, harmonica player. I'm gonna share you the one example, harmonica. Uh, Maurice Weinhorn, the guy that my mom was showing me yesterday, she talks about him with so much uh, appreciation, you, you know, because she said he was a very nice man. He is, actually, he's famous here as playing the harmonica. Look, is Maurice Weinhorn today? You see, Mauricio Einhorn today is almost 90 years old. He's still playing the harmonica. And my mom, when she met him, he was, I think, more than 20 years older than her. And she said that he was a very nice, respectful man. And he, she had a great time with him. But she decided, because she was very young and playful, she decided by herself to just take different paths. And he was okay, you know. So it was a healthy relationship and good memories for my mom. So in this case, it's fine. Sometimes we date people with same age, but they you can find yourself in a not healthy relationship. What really matters is love, true love, respect. That's the most important thing. But that's, you know, my opinion. It's just my opinion. Many of you and each of you, I totally respect individuals' opinion. And it's a thing that we can't really, uh, um, how can I say, disrespect, you know? Opinion is opinion. And I'm going to share a picture of my mom uh, today. Let me share this. We, we were at a samba party in a bar in my neighborhood last week. And my mom today is this lady of 60, 63 years old here, you see. And Mauricio Einhorn is more than 25 years older than her. So, and she said yesterday, you know, Kelly, please take me to a performance. I want to see Mauricio Einhorn again playing. I thought that's sweet, <laughs> cool. I want to take her. Yes, my mom is lovely, Sarah. You were right. She's a great woman. And uh, uh, 
now she's a little bit quieter in terms of not being as namoradeira, flirting girl, but she loves to go to rock and roll parties and samba parties. This week, she just surpassed me. Like I always get back home around midnight, two or three in the morning, but she arrived at 10 30 a.m. in the morning this week. You know, so that's why my mom, she, she's a, a model, like many people love her in our neighborhood and my friends as well. All right, we arrived here at the end of our tour. The lights are on at the beach of Ipanema, and I hope you enjoyed a good time, had a good time here with us. Remember, if you like that, if you engaged on this uh, dialogue very with some polemics, it was in a good balance. I'd like to know from you if you have any questions before we close. And while you think of your questions, follow me at Rio Encanto social media. And if you want to buy and see the pictures and photographs of Daniel Falcão, who is my friend here supporting me on the Wednesday's tours, you can ask me for this his website. And please, I think you will love to see a beautiful photograph of Rio de Janeiro in high quality, hanging on the wall of your room of your house showcasing for example the two brothers mountains the beaches of rio and common people enjoying their life oh guess what i'm glad you were bringing that up because on sunday this sunday dana will make a caipirinha making tour and we will go to laranjeiras to the general osorio general glicerio square she wants to prepare a caipirinha. We will teach you how to make it. And that is going to be Choro music. And we will be together, Dana and I, connecting for you because you asked for that. And we want to sh sh show you that guys here in Brazil can be friendly, at least my network, which I love. Bye-bye. Please remember to give us some money because that really helps us and motivates us. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, boa noite. I will, Sarah, thank you. Ciao, ciao, muito obrigada. Valeu todos vocês. Valeu, Sara, for your contributions, your questions, your, your shockings, your inquiries bye bye danny please join us next week follow me on hey go for more tours in rio de janeiro what can i say bye bye support us support the artists and the guides <risos> Eu tentando tirar você a onda pelo...